Yo, what is good, Mets Nation? Welcome back to Mets Media. This is Richie, and in this video, I'm going to recap the first New York Mets victory of the season. We come out on top 8-4 to four and defeat the Philadelphia Phillies, and we are now 1-1 one one on the season. We got our revenge from last night. We wasted a Jacob DeGrom gem, as we know, but tonight we get the job done. The bats were hot. We saw a very good performance from Marcus Stroman, and the bullpen... You know, they made us stressed out all over again, but they did their job. And the most important thing is we came out on top and the Mets are victorious. So in this video, I'm going to dig deep into everything I saw tonight from the manager, Louis Rojas, and all of his decisions. Uh, everybody at bat, we saw an injury to J.D. Davis, dissect Marcus Stroman on the mound, the bullpen, all that good stuff. But before I hop into this video, I just want to mention, if you guys are new to Mets Media, do not forget to hit that subscribe button. If you guys want to check me out over on Instagram and Twitter, that is at NYMets underscore media. And if you guys enjoy the video, please do not forget to thumbs it up. With that being said, let's jump right into this video. So I really thought this was a must win for the New York Mets for a lot of reasons. Obviously, we lost last night and it was devastating. We collapsed in the eighth inning. Trevor May came in there and Aaron Loop just looked really bad yesterday. And Trevor May, he bounced back tonight. He got into trouble. He had a wild pitch, and he was all over the place. He had a lot of pitch count. I mean, he pitched, what, 45 to 50 pitches in the first two games of the season. So he's probably not going to pitch for a, a long period of time. But he came in there, and he did his thing. Uh, I want to see that from Trevor May. We saw him in the press conference. He was very humble, and he understood that he was absolutely all over the place last night and he bounced back and i'm okay with what he did but listen guys we went up against the philadelphia phillies fifth starter in anderson and that is a game we need to beat especially with aaron nola on the mound tomorrow we have the advantage in the series that we had Degrom, stroman and peterson the top of our rotation against the back end of the phillies rotation but now obviously we get the number one starter for the Phillies tomorrow on the mound for Aaron Nola. So we'll see what happens. But this was definitely a must win. It would have been really bad if we fell 0-2 on the season and the Phillies go 5-0. Um, obviously, it's super early and we have a long season ahead of us. But still, this division is going to be tight. The Braves are 0-4, which is wild. But still, this really was a must win game. So I'm very happy we pulled out with a victory. All around, really good game from the New York Mets. The bats were hot. Um, we drove in runs. We got home runs from Dom Smith, Pete Alonzo, Francisco Lindor. He did not get a hit, but he did have a crucial sacrifice fly RBI. Marcus Stroman looked so good on the mound, and we saw some solid defense as well. So let's get into my recap. So let's talk about Marcus Stroman first. He had six innings, just giving up one run, which was a solo shot to Didi Gregorius, and his ERA is 1.50 on the season. He is just a magician when it comes to ground balls. He, I don't know the amount he did but it was easily like nine or ten soft ground balls and it was just beautiful to watch his command on the mound is so different he's such a unique approach like if you compare Jacob deGrom and Marcus Stroman's just style of pitching I'm not comparing them as players because Jacob deGrom is on another level than any other pitcher in the in the game but Marcus Stroman what I'm trying to say is their games are so different and they're so unique in their style and their approaches to the game and I love how he switches up his rhythm he can either fast pitch he goes slow the it keeps the batters on their heels. They don't know what type of you know pitch they're coming from Marcus Stroman. Is he going to quick pitch? Is he going to take his time? And you just tell the passion he plays with. He has fire. Um, he Whenever he strikes somebody out, he's going off into the dugout all pumped up, screaming. And we love the passion. We need people on the Mets just like that. And I love everything I saw from Marcus Stroman. The ability to get people to ground out at a consistent basis is elite. And that is insane. I saw a stat that he is just behind Dallas Keuchel since 2014. He has like the most ground ball highest percentage. I think it was around 59%, 60%, which is insane. So Marcus Stroman, we all know that his game as a starting pitcher in his whole career was getting guys to ground out, soft ground balls, letting them ground into double plays and all that good stuff. And that's exactly what we saw from Marcus Stroman. This is exactly the Stroman we need all throughout the season. Six innings, one run, I'll take that any day of the week. Marcus Stroman looked like a guy that is going to be having a very good season throughout the season. Let's just hope that he can be consistent because that's the one thing with Stroman. He can be very erratic at times. He can have a game like this, and then the next outing he can give up three or four runs. But let's hope he can build on to this start and just keep progressing as the season progresses because I'm really excited to see what Marcus Stroman does and I feel like he is going to have a very good season for the New York Mets. Now let's get into some individual performances, some guys at the plate. 
Pete Alonso was two of four with two RBIs and a nuke of a home run in the eighth inning. Awesome to see, or I think that was the ninth inning, excuse me. That was just amazing to see Pete Alonso to give us a nice cushion lead. He extended the lead to eight to two at the time. And Pete Alonso really looks like he's going to break out this year. Um, I, he doesn't really need to break out. We know what Pete Alonso brings to the table. I just feel like last year, a lot of Mets fans kind of lost their hope in Pete because he was struggling at the plate. He was, you know, fishing. He wasn't seeing that he was striking out too often, all that stuff. We know what happened with Pete Alonso last year, even though he was still on pace for top five home runs. But Pete Alonso looks like he's on another level today. And I feel like this season is going to be that Pete Alonso where he takes that step of being consistent because I've said in all my videos, Pete Alonso is the X factor of this offense because at that four hole, he is going to have so many opportunities to drive guys in with Brandon Nimmo, just a walking machine. Francisco Lindor, he's going to start getting hot. And Michael Goodfordo, he's starting off very well also. So it's really good to see Pete Alonso get his first home run of the season. Now let's get into Dom Smith. Dom Smith was one of four with two RBIs of his own. He was the first one to get the Mets on the board with the Oppo Taco opposite field home run. And that was a crazy home run. I did not realize that was going out. When he first hit it, I did not think that was out of the ballpark. It was a high fastball. He took it to left field. And it's good to see Dom Smith out there because I don't understand why he was not in the game at all last night, but we're not going to harp on the past. We're going to talk about this Mets victory because Dom Smith did his job and that's why he needs to be in the lineup. And it's devastating that we don't have a DH, but we got to adjust. We got to adapt. And that's what this Mets team is going to do because Dom Smith on left field, he looked good out there. He did not look like a, a totally incompetent left fielder. We know that he's not the greatest left fielder because he's a first baseman, obviously, but he did his job out there in left field. So Dom Smith to have his first at bat to be a home run, or I think it's a second at bat actually was a home run. Great to see that from Dom Smith. Michael Conforto, he was one of five on the night with a 300 average so far in the first two games. I think Michael Conforto, he looks like he's going to have another consistent season throughout the year when he just gets those multi-hit games. Um, he had an RBI as well. Francisco Lindor, he was 0 for 4, but he did have a run and he did have an RBI. So that tells you that Francisco Lindor, he is a situational hitter. When he was at bat, one out with bases loaded, I really was looking at him like, all right, we gave you this contract, Francisco. Let's see what you got. Let's drive in a run. And that's exactly what he did. He took the pitch that he took it, and he just took it to left center field, and he drove in a run. That's what you got to do. That would have been really bad if he struck out there or grounded into a double play. So we'd love to see that from um, Francisco Lindor. And Brandon Nimmo, Brandon Nimmo, 0 for 2 with three walks. This guy is an on-base machine. It's actually insane. I don't think there's anybody else in baseball that can draw walks like Brandon Nimmo, and he sprints to first base. Awesome to see him do that. And Jeff McNeil, he's still struggling. He has not got a hit so far this season. He was 0 for uh, 3 tonight with a walk, so hopefully he can get a hit at least tomorrow. And let's talk about J.D. Davis because he unfortunately went down with an injury. The first pitch he saw was drilled right in the hand. Luckily, there was no structural damage it's just a contused hand so he'll be back eventually it's going to be a day-to-day -day type of thing if it was a fractured hand that would have been bad he would have been out for you know four to six weeks minimum so very good news on jd davis in terms of that now let's get into the bullpen the bullpen they just love driving us crazy that's what the bullpen does it was one of those games where we're sitting back and then right when we see stroman leave i don't know about you guys but i'm like here we go again trevor may's in and trevor may he pitched one inning gave up two hits had two strikeouts. Um, he did not give up any runs. So that's a good sign from Trevor May. Even though it was one of those stressful, stressful innings, he did his job. And Castro as well. He pitched an inning. He gave up three hits, but he did give up one run and had two strikeouts. I'll take that from Castro. I feel like his stuff is so dirty. I feel like Castro is really impressing me so far in his um, tenure on the Mets this season. We acquired him last year at the deadline. So let's see what Castro can do throughout the year. And then Familia came in the ninth. Um, I was excited to see Edwin Diaz close out the game, to be honest, but then Pete Alonso gave us that 8-2 to lead in the ninth inning, so there was no need for him to come in. So Familia got the gig, and he gave up two hits, 
and had an earned run with a walk and one strikeout. So that really does it, man. I feel like this was an all-around vi all victory for the New York Mets. Comment down below your thoughts and your takeaways from the Mets. I'm excited that we got this W. We got another one tomorrow, the rubber game to who will win the series, the Mets or the Phillies. Let's get this dub against Aaron Nola. It's going to be tough. We got our young guy on the mound in our Southpaw Peterson. So we will see what happens. That is at 4 o'clock tomorrow, I'm pretty sure. So stay tuned for my recap over there on Mets Media tomorrow after the game. So that is it for this video. If you guys stay tuned until the end, comment down below an Apple emoji so I know you guys are here. I appreciate all the support here on Mets Media. I'm very close to hitting 1,000 subscribers. So if you guys are new, make sure you hit that subscribe button and join the Mets Media community. I appreciate all of you guys. Let's go Mets. You gotta believe. Peace out.